On Easter Sunday back in 1750, 250 years ago, one of the saints of the church, St. Alphonsus de Liguri, chose what might sound like a rather unusual subject for his Easter Sunday sermon, when most of the other priests were probably talking about the joy of the resurrection, victory over sin and death, the promise of eternal life. This Italian saint picked the title, The Miserable State of Relapsing Sinners. The miserable state of relapsing sinners. Sounds a bit fierce. Who can imagine the response he got from his congregation with that kind of title on Easter Sunday morning? But this great saint of the Catholic Church has a point. It's easy to get really hyped up at Easter and to make a real effort with the Catholic faith only for things to fall flat down only a little later. I know a lot of you went to confession in Holy Week. Quite a few of you were going to extra devotions like the Stations of the Cross, evening retreats, listening to more talks on, on the internet. And some of you tried to go to extra masses around Holy Week in this period and the extra liturgies uh, in that time also. But what happens now? Is it just back to normal, back to usual? Every year, it seems like, about 100,000 people become Catholics in the USA. They convert from other religions or no religion. They make the amazing decision to enter the one true church. But there are plenty of statistics out there to show that of that 100,000, something like 10% will have fallen away 10 years later. What happens? The short answer is, they fail to persevere. And that's what I want to talk about this morning, the importance of persevering, the importance of making the daily yes to Almighty God, of fighting through temptations, of coping with monotony, and remaining faithful to Christ and his church. St. Alphonsus preached that sermon on the miserable state of relapsing sinners, probably because he had a packed church in front of him, probably because he saw a church full of Catholics who had made a good confession the last week, and who had now come for Easter Mass, but the saint probably knew that a good half of them were in danger of making their next visit to church in nine months' time at Christmas. So he gave them a sermon, warning them about backsliding, of how hard it is to recover from habits of sin, and the danger of dying suddenly without the sacraments. In the early church, way back in the early days, this was also a common theme in Easter homilies. We all know that Easter is like the fulfillment of the Jewish Passover, right? When the Jews got saved from the angel of death and got out of Egypt. When they escaped from slavery, when they passed through the Red Sea, when all of Pharaoh's armies were destroyed. That's true. But what did the Jews find on the other side? What awaited them once they had escaped from Egypt? Was it the promised land? Was it the land of milk and honey? No. It wasn't. They found the desert. They found 40 years of wandering in the desert. They found 40 years of hard perseverance. Our Catholic faith, our time on earth, is like wandering through the desert. We have entered the one true church. We've escaped the paganism of Egypt. Alleluia to that. But we don't find paradise. We find a struggle. We find a daily challenge to remain faithful. Sure, there is a joy and peace of knowing that you are heading to the right destination, but we are on a slow train. You can get a bit cramped, you might not get a seat for a good part of the journey, and you might not get on with all the other people on board. But this is the only train that is heading to eternal life in heaven. You won't find the Protestant train heading to eternal life. You won't find the Muslim train. You won't find the Hindu train. You won't find any of those other trains heading to eternal life. We need to remain on this train and not jump off too early because the journey is getting tiring or you don't like the atmosphere. God didn't abandon the, Jew, abandon the Jews when he led them through the desert those 40 years. He was with them. We are told that God himself dwelt within their little camp by day, the presence of God was shown by a cloud hovering over the worship tent. 
And then by night, a pillar of fire blazed from within that same tent. In our church, by day and night, we know that Jesus Christ is with us in the tabernacle by that little fire, the sanctuary lamp that burns unceasingly before the place where Jesus Christ dwells. I guess those Jews would have come frequently to pray before the presence of God. And the great thing is, in this parish, it's a, the church is open most of the time. So you can do that. You can come before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament and cast before him your worries and needs and joys and thanksgiving. But along with the cloud and the fire, God also provided a miraculous food for those Jews in the desert. He provided them with the manna, bread from heaven which gave them all the nourishment they needed to persevere, to keep their faith, to resist the temptation of going back to Egypt, to resist the temptation of going back to the pagan practices they had once followed. And it's the same for us. Holy Communion is the fulfillment of that manna. And Holy Communion is also, is also far, far greater than the manna, because the manna at the end of the day was just bread. It was special bread, but it was bread all the same but holy communion has stopped being bread it's the flesh and blood of our risen lord jesus christ he feeds us with his own body and blood to help us survive the journey through the desert the journey to the promised land today's gospel the road to emmaus shows two disciples of christ who have fallen at the first moment of struggle their faith has wavered. They're leaving Jerusalem. They're heading off, perhaps going back to their old way of life before they knew our Lord. There are so many Catholics out there like that at this moment. Things haven't gone great in their life. They feel they've been given a bad hand. Maybe they aren't so sure if they can trust our Lord. Maybe they've got into some sinful habits. Maybe they've watched a few documentaries on TV about Christianity. They put these on at this time of year and those wicked shows are actually just produced to attack the truths of the faith. One-sided, biased reports that usually don't even feature a Catholic voice or reasoned explanation of the fact. They've got some called some so-called expert from the University of West England or other, some other rather less honourable academic institution. Apparently an expert my goodness turn the tv off we've got to be the ones who walk alongside those who are wavering we've got to know our faith but we don't learn our faith from these crap entertainment shows we've got to be able to offer words of encouragement based on the truth and words of prayer how our hearts burn within us when he explained the scriptures to us and walk with us along the road. Those words hopefully will be said about you. Wouldn't it be amazing to be the one that offered consolation to the person who's struggling, who brought them back to confession, who accompanied them to Holy Mass? It's within the reach of each one of us. And the story of the road to Emmaus concludes with Holy Mass. The Bible says they recognized Jesus at the breaking off the bread it says he had vanished but they recognized he was there and he was there although he was no longer in front of them as the same man who was perhaps five foot ten with his short black beard and curly hair he was there under the appearance of bread he was there and they recognized him perhaps they even received him in holy communion the amazing thing is today in a very short time we will have a chance to do exactly the same. It is the Lord, Dominus Est. We will open our mouths and receive him, the same Jesus who had vanished from their sight, but who they recognized because he was the bread. The bread had stopped being bread, and every particle of that bread was now a particle of Jesus. Jesus, increase my faith. It is really you here in Holy Communion. Give me the strength that, that from this Holy Communion to live another week in your service, to persevere through trials, to be constant in my daily prayer, 
to be a faithful witness to your truth, to stick it out through the desert and make it at last to the promised land, the kingdom of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.